I'm Dog Got Frog Log. Welcome to my Axie Infinity Marketplace Guide. We'll cover how to use the marketplace, talk about rare axes, the different types of land you can own, limited edition items, and how to play to earn free cryptocurrency. After you watch this Axie Infinity tutorial, you'll understand how to navigate the marketplace and have a fair idea of which assets and axes are valuable and why. The Axie Infinity team has recently launched a new marketplace. Click the shop icon on the top of the main page to see all the items, axes, and lands other players have for trade. Here you can easily filter by general information, specific mover body part, or stats. You can also display each axis body parts by clicking this button on the top right. On the left you have tabs to filter by price, ID, and latest postings. You can also browse axes that aren't for sale if you just want to get ideas for a new breed or team. General lets you select the class of axe you'd like to see, and Pureness allows you to filter how many body parts of any one type it has. Remember that each Axie class has an advantage and disadvantage against two different classes in PvE and PvP battles. Make sure you have the proper types depending on the teams or breeds you want to make. Something to remember is that the secret classes, Dusk, Dawn, and Moon, will be more expensive than their base counterparts due to their breeding requirements. They can only be bred from two pure parents. Make sure to check my upcoming breeding guide for more info on how to make each of the secret classes. Stage lets you choose from egg and larva, petite, or adult axes. Sometimes unmorphed axes can be pretty good deals. People will sell them a little bit cheaper because they don't want to hatch them. Check the tools section in the description after the video for some useful tools to help you shop and um, check out their stats and everything. Breed count lets you filter axes by the amount of times they've already been bred. Each time an axe is bred, the cost in SLP goes up. Finding strong, cheap, easily breedable axes is key to filling out your roster and winning each PvP season. Origin and Mio axes don't require any SLP to be bred, so these are a great way to really fill out your roster if you can get them for cheap. Origin axes are axes from the Axie Infinity pre-sale. There will never be more than 4,088 Origin axes. Origin axes will also possess a special victory pose when they win in the arena. Origin Axes might grant you beta access to upcoming Axie content as well. The closed beta was open to all Origin holders, while non-Origin holders had to wait for the open beta. Mystic Axes are Origin Axes with Mystic Body Parts. These Mystic Body Parts can only be found on Origin Axes. These Body Parts will never be created again, and the Mystic version of Body Parts cannot be bred or inherited either. There'll never be more than 1,453 Mystic Axes in the game, and Mystic Axes can have multiple Mystic Body Parts. Mystic Body Parts are also the only body parts that can be upgraded into Legendary Attacks. There's also 1,237 Axie Origin Coins saved by the Axie Infinity team for promotional events and tournaments. Axie Origin Coin was distributed for referrals during the Axie Infinity pre-sale event and can be traded in for Origin Axies at a 5 to 1 rate. These Axie Origin Coins can roll Mystics and are very valuable if you can get any. So keep an eye on bounties and promotions, contests, tournaments, that's their best place to win them. Meocorp axes only come from eggs sold in the Axie Lab. The Axie Lab is rolled out in seasons, and once a lab for a season is closed down, the tag will change to reflect this. So the Axie will say Meo 1, 2, 3, etc., depending on what season it's from. Just like Origin axes, Meo axes also require SL zero SLP to breed. The team also has Meo tokens. Just like Axie Origin coins, these tokens can be exchanged at a 5 to 1 rate for a free Axie from the latest season of the Meo Lab. There's also several exclusive skins and limited edition axes. The easiest alternate skins to get are the Japanese body parts. You just need to change your language to Japanese when you breed in order to acquire them. They don't offer any bonuses in battle compared to the normal body parts, but they do look pretty cool. Don't pay much extra for these, you can easily make simple combinations yourself. Holiday themed axes are also available. Look out for the Christmas skin axes which offer a festive variant to normal axes. These skins are exclusive to their holiday season, and once the season ends, they can no longer be bred for holiday parts. Since they will only breed normal axes after the holiday ends, a perfect holiday skin can be pretty pricey. There's also some limited edition axes like the Agamogenesis axes, which have never before seen body parts called Bionic Parts. Bionic Parts were uh, the latest project of the Mio Corporation, and these special custom made parts were created with the purpose of replacing lost parts on axes. Um, so basically prosthetic limbs for axes. And while the original axes have their own unique skin color variant and look, um, the body parts can be bred and passed on to their children. So it is possible to pick up the move sets um, on 
some other axes that you'd like. So you can breed from that for the marketplace. Next, we have the land system in Axie Infinity. The Lunatia map is divided into tokenized plots of land called Terra. 25% of the map will be sold in each sale, and the price will increase by 17.42% in each sale thereafter. Each plot of land can be purchased, rented out, and developed by players. Landholders will be able to upgrade and customize their territory to host shops and markets, chimera summoning beacons, dungeon entrances, and player-created games. The land system features will be coming out in a future update. Look forward to summer 2020 and make sure you like and follow me to catch the news when it does. There are five different types of land in Axie Infinity. Savannas are the cheapest lands. They're the easiest to build an estate with during the sales. And they're also the lands that are located farthest away from the prime resource and event nodes. They're a pretty good option if you want to resource gather and have some basic buildings or build a really large estate for cheap. Forests are the second cheapest land, and the location kind of varies. Forest does have some prime road locations, access to several lesser resources, and much closer to the event tiles than Savannah. Next up are Arctic lands. These have less large resource hubs than forests, but they're prime locations to hunt Chimera and contest events from. Axes will often travel back home across Arctic lands early on their route. They'll drop several extra items, resources, and Luna, and this makes these prime locations for profiting off of foot traffic. Try to buy your lands near the main resource hubs and roads if you really want to profit off of your Arctic lands. Mystic lands are the best that money can buy. Located nearly in the center of the map, these are the best place for your shops, stores, and more. Prime foot traffic, an ideal location to hunt chimeras and win events. Expect ideal locations to be very pricey. Zone 1 will feature the most content, but Mystic lands have strong pathing to all of the middle sections. There are two premium lands left that can't be purchased by regular means. The first is Genesis lands. These are only won from land purchases by sheer luck and located in the center of the map. Genesis land is extremely rare and capped at 220 plots. There will be rare bosses that spawn on Genesis lands and the owners of Genesis lands will get a cut of all the resources that are collected on their land. This land is located directly beside Luna's landing and land inside Luna's landing is no longer available either. Only players who completed item collections during the start of the first land sale were able to claim one plot of Luna's Landing. There are also lots of items available from the land sale. The land system isn't out yet, which will heavily affect prices as we adjust to the new gameplay. The best items probably are items that have passive bonuses to XP, item gathering, resource finding, anything like that. Look for good deals on items you don't have, which could potentially save you time crossing the map, securing your loot, or farming resources. There are also several exclusive items which have been released so far. Coin Gecko, Chimera, Ganbaru, Tanuki, Kitsune, and the Maker Dao Gold, Silver, and Bronze Editions. There will also be resources in Luna, the in-game currency that spawn in nodes across Lunatia, and these can be used to upgrade land and axes. Landholders will still receive a portion of all the resources that are harvested on their land, even if they're stolen. Certain resources are tied to the seven moons of Lunatia and will only spawn when a certain moon is shining, so only dirt in certain times of the week or year. This means that owning the right land in the right spots can be very valuable. There's also several structures which you will be able to build on your land. These buildings will require an Axie or a team of Axies to operate, so make sure you have plenty ready. Axies with specific characteristics can imbue the structures they operate with different abilities. For example, a Mystic Axie might allow a potion shop to create highly advanced potions that are not available at other shops or unlock special features in the battle tent. Axie Infinity uses an in-game currency called Luna. Luna has several uses, from buying special limited edition items, upgrading axes, expanding and upgrading plots of land, purchasing potions and battle boost, paying marketplace commissions, advertising axes and content, purchasing merchandise, and also governance. Luna holders will be deciding what content can be added to Lunatia as well. So the biggest Luna and land holders will always have a say in what happens on their lands. There will also be a set pool of Luna tokens every month, which will be distributed between the most popular games on players' lands. Players can currently buy Luna by using a referral link, like mine, and buying land in the store during a land sale. Players will get 10% of all their purchases back as Luna if they used a referral code. Now before we talk about play to earn, here are some tips to help you make a profit in the marketplace. 
Discord is a great place to fund buyers and make trades. Check out the marketplace and economy sections to keep up to date with the latest Axie financials. Be careful when dealing directly with other users. Make sure to use an official marketplace or escrow for large trades. The Axie Infinity Marketplace fees are 4.25% for general sales. If you are dealing with an offer in person, OpenSea offers 0% trading for Axie Infinity private sales. Just click on Sell, choose Private Listing, and put their wallet address in. Use this option to save a ton on your trading fees without worrying about getting scanned. Finally, and what we love the most, how do you play to earn with Axie Infinity? There are three main ways to play to earn with Axie Infinity. The first is breeding Axies. Pretty simple but pretty complex. Having a large stable of axes is gonna be key to making a lot of money. Axes are used for everything, buildings, land, resource gathering, tournaments, and PVE content. The more axes you have, the more options you got. Try to breed rare combinations of powerful PVP skills, rare exclusive body types, or pure and secret classes to earn the most from your stable. Look for cheap egg and petite axes to quickly and strategically build your roster. And remember that Origin and Mio axes don't need SLP to breed. The breeding mechanics can be pretty confusing, so make sure to subscribe to my channel to catch my beginner's guide for breeding. Next up is PVE. Pretty simple. Story mode, single player, limited time events. Monsters called Chimera are terrorizing Lunatia. So you need to take them out. You need to save these poor little axes. Chimera will drop an assortment of resources, items, blueprints, and these can all be used to upgrade territory and axes. Some Chimera drops will be limited edition tokenized items, so good luck tracking those down and finding them. Currently, you can click through on the story mode and play through the main story content. Each mission will drop SLP and allow you to level up your axes. When the land update comes in future seasons, we'll see a lot more that you'll be able to do here with the PVE modes. If you play low level missions with higher level axes, you will get little to no SLP. So make sure that you keep your axes level appropriate for the missions that they're doing. This will get you a lot more in the long run. And finally, PVP. PVP is a very popular way to earn some cash in Axie Infinity. And if you do it right, this will cover all of your breeds as you're working your way up the roster. Right now, just from winning SLP, you can make up to $2 an hour if you're crushing it in PvP. There's plenty of Season 1 and Season 2 tournaments available. Make sure you follow AxieGG, Leaky Games, and Jihaz on Twitter as they'll have all of the best information. AxieEdge.com slash events is another good resource for seeing what's going on in the Axie world and gearing yourself up for some PvP battle. And that covers it for my Axie Infinity Guide. If you have any questions, you need any more detailed answers, just ask me in the comments below. Axie Infinity is one hell of a game and they're going to have an even better year. Make sure to check the description below the video for links and resources. I've also included some tools, which you'll be able to see here from Axie World, which will help you um, find petite axes, see what they are, see what their abilities are before they morph them. Um, a breeding calculator so you know what uh, your breeds might be before you buy some axes um, just some fantastic tools make sure you use those make sure you check out axes link below and thanks for watching